Welcome to the next installment of the Chill Off under the Data Center Pulse video podcast. I'm Dean Nelson, and uh, today is pretty cool because I get to share with you some of the actual testing that's going on. Uh, Clustered Systems is one of the companies that are participating within this. And uh, about four months ago, I was introduced to Phil Hughes, who's the CEO of Clustered Systems, by Bill Schutte from the Lawrence Berkeley National Labs. Bill had seen what they were doing, and he says, you might want to go over and take a look at it. So when I did, I saw it, looked very interesting, and uh, decided to test them on it. So we handed them a X4100 server, because their concept is to now have fanless servers and use a cold plate technology. I said, prove it with this server, show me what you can actually pull out of it. And they did, and this is what you're going to see. Then we want to go out and start to scale this back up in the chill off itself. So some pretty interesting things that are coming out of this, and I'm really excited about what it's going to mean in the chill off. Check it out. Okay, so we're now going to be looking at the at the, the results in real time. Uh, here you'll see a um, a picture using a speed fan, uh, which is a, a program off the web, which gives the uh, the temperature indicated by the thermal diodes within the CPUs. And as you can see, at uh, maximum load, uh, both CPUs are uh, core temperatures are about 50 degrees C. Uh, that really is unprecedented. And the program we're using, as I mentioned earlier, is the, uh, the um, AMD Therm Now. And these are running at... Uh, and these are running at... Each, each processor and each core are running at 2.6 megahertz at 100% yeah. load, right? Correct. Okay, and that's actually what's generating the, the uh, temperature, of course, in the, uh, the CPUs here. Correct, yeah. So 50C. Okay. Yep. So that, that actually translates, as you can see, into uh, CPU uh, lid temperatures of about 40 degrees C maximum. And then if you look at all the rest of the, of the temperature that we're measuring inside, you see there's nothing over 50 degrees C. And in this particular experiment, we're using uh, 18 degrees C uh, refrigerant. And beside it here, we'll see a couple of graphs. As you can see, these are the, the CPU um, the gigabit Ethernet, the the Northbridge DRAM, and the uh, the video chip. And the DRAM is on the bottom. The DRAM is down here. Yeah. Sorry, is it this the DRAM? Yeah, this is the DRAM. The DRAM and the load yeah, yeah. itself. Okay. Yeah. And then the CPUs, we've got the blue line and the red line, right? Correct. The yeah. two cores. Yeah. And this is before the load, and then it's. This is this is at idle. Mm -hmm. And then this is at full load. Okay. And this is temperature, and this is time, right? Yeah. And as you can see, now we've also just switched this off. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the core immediately cools down. Mm -hmm. And then it will, the, as the, the rest of the system around it cools down, it'll then bottom out at about uh, uh, 35 degrees C approximately. Got it. Okay, we've just pulled the server out so you can see what's, what's going on inside. Um, as you can see, this, this server is, is segmented into, into various pieces. We've got power supplies back here. Uh, we've got disk drives here. Uh, this is where the motherboard is. This is where the fans go. So let's first of all look at the at the uh, at what happened within the in the motherboard area. As you can see, we removed the heat sinks, which were here and here. Replaced these by uh, what we call heat risers. And then we also provided another treatment to the DRAMs. Um, as you can see, these have been, uh, uh, these have also got their own little mini miniature heat risers. Uh, these are effectively very much as what were, how um, DRAMs are encapsulated today, so that the change is basically zero cost. Um, here we've added a couple of extra heat risers. Um, We've just effectively for this one, we've cheated a little bit and just put two aluminum blocks on top of the existing uh, heat sinks underneath, which is which was perfectly adequate for this experiment. And the rest of the board effectively didn't need anything on them. So the heat um, is transmitted to the surface. It gets um, this uh, this undersurface has got a thermal into this material on it, which. Uh, provides a very, very efficient um, interconnect, thermal interconnect with the heat risers, passes through the lid, uh, which is also treated on the other side with a thermal interface nice. material, uh, and then is, uh, is transmitted 
um, uh, yeah, to the to the cold plate, yeah. which is yeah. under yeah. here, uh, and this consists of um, some very fine uh, microchannel tubing. Uh, again, this is uh, this is the this particular uh, microchannel tubing is produced in very high volume and is actually used in automotive. So it is again very low cost. And to show some of the consequences of what happens, again, can't emphasize what happens when you remove the fans. Uh, you get a huge chunk of real estate back and you're going to save a lot of money in fans. So this, this technology is both appropriate for the OEM, they save money on manufacturing and the, uh, the end user saves money on electricity. Well, we consider the, the concept proven. Uh, what, we've, what we've done is we've uh, taken the fans out of the system. The total load is about 120 watts in terms of fan power. And what that does in real life, that converts to a 14% savings at around room temperature by removing the fans, up to 40% savings at 40 degrees C. Uh, in terms of what we've done, uh, we can now run our server at full load at 330 watts, uh, whereas before, with, um, with the fans there, we were running at about uh, 430 watts. So that's 100 watts worth of fan power that was not doing anything useful and has now been removed. So as you can see there, uh, they've got some pretty interesting uh, accomplishments so far just with a single server. At a minimum, it's 15% reduction in the actual consumption of that server. And when you think about the residual of that effect across all the other infrastructure it's supporting, uh, it's a pretty significant cut. Uh, the AC to DC debates, the loss of the transformers, of the UPS, to the lighting, all that, all of a sudden 15% is a big deal. So I'm very interested in what this is going to look like when it goes to scale. Um, so, Thank you again for watching and stay tuned for the next updates on the chill off here on Data Center Pulse. Bring the beat back.